Experiencing your experience is the beginning of profound consciousness. There is nothing supernatural about the other world. It is as ordinary as any mundane activity that you and I engage in. The other world involves an understanding of the ontological dimension of life beyond the moral. It is the realm of wild self-consciousness beyond the superimposition of rational capacities upon it. But one of the remarkable things about reason is that it points beyond itself. The other world is the world beyond reason that reason itself points to. When a word like immortality or endlessness broke into history, it broke into history as a phenomenological state, as a state of being. People become aware of endlessness. In the other world, I am no more alive, and I am no more dead. Categories of living and dying do not apply to the other world. There are only categories of being. Eternal life is not something that is going to happen after you die. It is not something that is going to happen before you die. It is the eternal moment that is beyond the rubrics of both living and dying. In the other world, there is only being. The mystery, which is being in itself, has no opportunity to be except through your being. There is no being without your being, and since everything but being in itself, the mystery, is contingent and temporal, that means my being is everlasting. God and I in this state come to terms with one another. It is as though I were to say, God, I will be your being in my living and dying. I will be your being. And God says, All right, all right, and I will let you participate in my endlessness. So God says, uh, if you want to, I want you to become God too, but it'll only work on my time. <laughs> you're acknowledging you're a creature and made out of nothing. Once you accept that, you can have everything, including me. Joe Matthews, some of you know, some of you don't, but my main mentor in life and the founder of the religious order that some of us here belong to at one time, he talked about great thanks, let's call it GT, that means great think, great feel, and great resolve. You can see the knowing, being, doing structure here. <laughs> uh, great thinks is something that your mind participates in. Great feel is something your, I don't know what, your deep being participates in. And the great resolve is your intentionality. You're taking that in and living it. Pole of the all experience. So all is great think, or can be accessed through great things that go with it, great feels, and great resolves. Uh, now we built, or Matthews built, or some of us helping Matthews build, a whole bunch of charts uh, on states of being with different great thinks and great feels and great resolves. Uh, just an amazing contemplative inquiry into the whole wonder of, of, of all. But let me illustrate the great think image. Life and death are two wings on the same bird. Death walks with us every day of our living. As Carlos Castaneda suggests, death walks behind us, just over our left shoulder. If we turn our head quickly, we might see death walking there. Anyhow, you get a certain sense of what we're talking about here with these three categories. Uh, that any particular great thing that leads you into a state of awe has with it some feeling, some deep feeling, and has with it the necessity to resolve in order even to experience this, uh, this happening. Well, I'm going to take us a little further into this and read a poem when the 
Matthews and company created these charts of, of, um, of the, all the states of being of all there are, <laughs> in principle. Of course, any chart is incomplete, but, uh, but anyway, that was the idea. What are all the states of all? And we came up with that in one sentence, if you'll believe it. We live in a land of mystery that contains a flowing river of consciousness, a huge mountain of care, and a wild sea of tranquility. Those four categories uh, can be used, we said, to symbolize, or at least to organize, all the many states of awe that human beings are experiencing. We live in a land of mystery. We know nothing about it. We don't know where we've come from. We don't know where we're going. We don't know where we are. We are newborn babes. We have never been here before. We will never see it again. This moment is fresh, unexpected, surprising. As this moment moves into the past, it cannot be fully remembered. All memory is a creation of our minds, and our minds cannot fathom the land of mystery, much less remember it. We experience mystery now, and only now. Any previous now is gone forever. Any yet to be now is not yet born. We live now, only now, in a land of mystery. Within the land of mystery flows a river of consciousness or freedom. Consciousness is a moisture in the desert of things, an enigma in the land of mystery. Consciousness flows through body and mind. Our bodies are pain and pleasure, desire, emotion, stillness and passion. All these are but rocks in the water on the banks of the river of consciousness. Consciousness is not the body but a flow through the body and with the body. Consciousness is an alertness that is also a freedom to intend, to will, to do. The mind is a tool of consciousness, providing consciousness with the ability to reflect upon consciousness itself. But consciousness cannot be contained within the images and symbols of the mind. Consciousness is an enigma that mind cannot comprehend. Even noticing consciousness is an act of consciousness using the mind and flowing like a river in the land of mystery. Within the land of mystery rises a mountain of care. Care for self, care for others, care for earth, care for the cosmos, care that we exist, care that we suffer, care that we may find rest and fulfillment, care that we may experience our caring and not grow numb and dead. It takes no effort to care. It takes effort not to care. Care is given with the land of mystery. Care is part of the mystery of being. We care. We just care. We are made of care. Care is a mountain because care is so huge so challenging to embrace, to climb, to live. Care is a demand upon us that is more humbling, more consuming, more humiliating than all the authorities and laws and obligations of our social existence. Care is a forced march into the dangers and the hard work of constructing a life that is not a passive vegetable growth, nor a wildly aggressive obsession. Care is an inescapable given, simply there. Yet care is also an assertion of our very being. It is compassion, devotion, love for all that is given and for all parts of every given thing and being. Like Atlas, we lift the planet day by day, year by year, love without end in the land of mystery. In the land of mystery, there is a sea of tranquility, a place of rest amidst the wild waters of life. The waves may be high, 
our small boat tossed about, but there we are with a courageous heart. It is our heart that is courageous. We are born with this heart. We do not achieve it. We can simply rest within our own living heart, our own courageous heart that opens vulnerably to every person and all the aspects of that person, to our own self and to every aspect of that self, to life as a whole with all its terrors and joys. This is a strange rest, for no storm can end it, no challenge of life defeat it, no loss, no death, no horror of being, no fear can touch our courageous heart. We live if we allow ourselves to truly live on this wild sea of everything in the tranquility of our own indestructible, courageous heart. To manifest and fully experience this tranquility, we only have to give up the creations of our mind that we have substituted for this ever-present peace. We have only to open to the land of mystery, flowing in a river of consciousness, containing a mountain of care. Here and here alone do we find the sea of tranquility. Here in the land of mystery that our mind cannot comprehend, create, or control, here beyond our deepest depth or control is a sea of tranquility in the land of mystery. What is the poetry? What is the story? What is the myth I will use to talk to myself and others about my experience of my experience of life? What is the language of experience I am being invited to explore as I journey solitarily and with all of humanity into the depth of the new millennia? Join me in the search for a new global metaphor. Join me as we evolve a contemporary language of experience. <laughs>